vigil in front of Senator Manchin's Charleston office at the West Virginia Lottery Building. My name is Morgan King, and I'm the Climate Campaign Coordinator at the West Virginia Rivers Coalition. And I'm so happy to be here today with all of you emceeing this rally. We're here today to raise our voices and advocate for the impactful policies in the Build Back Better Act. We heard our own Senator's words on national television that he can't support this beneficial bill for West Virginia. But this is not over. We can and must keep fighting for Build Back Better. We must keep fighting for the West Virginian people, keep fighting for our workers, our children, our families, our veterans, our lands, our waters, our mountains. We must keep fighting for West Virginia. We know we can't wait any longer to strengthen care for families and children. We can't wait longer to ensure that medications are accessible and affordable. We can't wait any longer for increased access to education that brings economic prosperity to our people and country. And we can't wait any longer towards meeting science-based emission reduction targets set forth by leading world scientists. And we can't wait any longer for safe and clean jobs. That is why we're here today elevating the voices of West Virginians. We'll hear from some speakers and then have the opportunity to hear from you all with an open mic. So let's kick things off with our first speaker, the executive director of the West Virginia Rivers Coalition, Angie Rosser. She'll be speaking on climate and water today. Let's give a warm welcome for Angie. Thank you, Morgan, for creating this space. Thank you all for coming back out. Um, it was inspiring to see West Virginians gathered yesterday, inspiring to see people coming out and saying, hear, hear our voice, hear our stories. And I want to talk a moment about clean, safe water. Is that important to you all? Yeah. Do we need water to survive, clean, safe? Have we had some problems with that in the past in West Virginia? What about right now? What about, let's, you know, when I think about Build Back Better and what this can do for West Virginians, I think about Clarksburg. Have you all heard about Clarksburg and their problem with lead showing up in children's bloodstreams? Well, guess what? Build Back Better would provide $9 billion across this nation, including here in West Virginia, to replace those lead lines. So we're talking about providing safe water to our children, to Clarksburg, to people across this state and across this nation. We deserve it. We need it. I also think about the people of Huntington and Morgantown who, with the extreme precipitation weather events we saw this past summer, had raw sewage in their basements because we weren't able to handle the stormwater, the wastewater infrastructure here in West Virginia. And when I think about building back better, I think about making sure that raw sewage doesn't come in anybody's basement in Huntington and Morgantown, anywhere in this country. So build back better would bring more investments in managing stormwater and wastewater. It would also provide assistance to people having problems affording their water bills. And finally, I think about, in terms of water, I think about my own community up on the Elk River, up in Clay County. And I think about myself, the constant anxiety about when is the next rain event going to come? What kind of safety nets do we have? What kind of uh, ways are we trying to prevent the cost of flood in the future? Well, guess what? Build Back Better will provide my community and communities across the state that are highly susceptible, highly vulnerable to floods, some, some extra help and affordability of flood insurance. And finally, when I think about the climate crisis that we're facing, back to my, my uh, persistent anxiety about when the next flood will come and how my community of Clendenin or Clay is going to to be able to recover again. Five and a half years, we're still without a grocery store up in Clay. We're still not the same that we were. And I can't imagine, I can't imagine what the next time will be like and what kind of safety net we will have for for our communities. And it, and it, it, it reminds me of the urgency 
And as Morgan was saying, the scientific imperative that we need to act now on climate, we cannot, we cannot dilly-dally. We cannot wait um, for, for Congress to, to come to, to figure out every detail. We need Senator Joe Manchin to lead on climate, to follow the science, to listen to the scientists about the benchmarks and the milestones we have to meet. Recent reports that are out show us that existing policy or, or, and the um, bipartisan infrastructure bill simply isn't going to be enough that we have to pass policies and make investments and build back better to have a chance, to have a chance to meet the scientific imperative to address the climate crisis and avoid the worst impacts of climate change, especially flooding vulnerabilities that we face right here in West Virginia. And I just want to end with the last thing that I think is especially compelling when I look at the Build Back Better Act and what it does for climate change and what it also does for the pockets of people living in West Virginia. How many of us would like to see lower energy costs? Lower energy costs. How much of a, how many of us would like to have uh, more accessibility and for, affordability to put rooftop solar on our homes, on our businesses, on our churches? That is exactly what Build Back Better will enable us to do. Create access to clean energy and in that access provide good jobs right here in West Virginia as we transition to an energy, a clean energy future. So thanks again, everybody, for being here. I hope Joe, Senator Manchin is hearing us, that this is not the time to walk away from negotiations. This is the time to represent West Virginia. This is what we elected him to do, to do his job as senator, to engage in negotiations, to stay at the table, and make sure that, we, that he is doing the best he can for West Virginia. Thank you. Back to Morgan. Thank you so much, Angie, for speaking on the urgency of addressing climate change, the urgency of protecting our people, our rivers, our mountains from the worst impacts of this climate emergency. She mentioned it, and she's right, that we have this opportunity to become energy leaders again in this country by embracing clean energy and addressing the climate emergency. So thanks so much again, Angie. Next up, I'd like to welcome Rick Wilson of the American Friends Service Committee to talk on the need for a strong child tax credit for West Virginian families. Thank you. This is my dog, but... <laughs> 2022 is kind of a big anniversary for me because 100 years ago, the American Friends Service Committee started working in West Virginia. 100 years ago, there were hard times in the coal fields. 100 years ago, there were kids who didn't have food security. 100 years ago, child poverty was a thing. I could just stop there. But that has actually started to change this year with the provision of the American Rescue Plan. On July 15th, the child tax credit became refundable, bringing income directly in the hands of parents and caregivers. This has been the most dramatic drop in child poverty in American history. With the very first installment of this, the child food insecurity rate dropped by 25%. Columbia University estimates that it kept nearly 4 million kids out of poverty in November alone, and that number is going up. And we've been talking to people, and there's some people here who have been impacted by the child tax credit, and we asked them what they did with their money. There's one thing nobody said. Anybody want to guess what it was? We didn't hear a lot of people saying they wanted to buy good drugs and get strung out. I mean, perhaps, uh, but anyway, what were they doing? <coughs> people were buying food, moving to better housing, keeping their cars on the road, buying clothing and shoes, fixing the toilet, which is kind of important, and utilities, all those basic things. Unfortunately, the things now stand, the last installment went out December 15th. So we're here to call on our Senator to go back to the table to preserve the tax credit, but we need to make sure it goes to the people who need it the most. This can reduce child poverty by 40%, they say. I think it's even higher, but only if it goes to the poorest people. 
Certain senators called for income and work requirements for the child tax credit. That would actually take it away from the people who need the most, who would benefit the most. There's all kind of science about adverse childhood experiences with poverty going down through the years. And the other thing that I hope the senator thinks about, it would leave out a lot of people in West Virginia who could not meet a work requirement, an income requirement. There are a lot of grandparents taking care of kids in West Virginia right now. There are a lot of people with disability or who are taking care of people with disabilities who can't work right now who have kids in their household. And taking care of other humans is kind of important too, even though uh, some people might not have gotten that memo. There are people in domestic violence situations who for reasons of just physical safety cannot be out, cannot be seen in public. There are people working on their recovery from substance use disorder who need to be in treatment for this. There are seasonal workers, there are very low income workers. There's a huge number of people that are left out. And let's just not forget where this, this, the roots of work requirements come from. Remember when Reagan was talking about welfare queens? And when he talked about strapping young bucks, buying steak with food stamps? That was racist dog whistling. And that dog whistling has been to paint poor people in poverty in racist terms and create the illusion that poor people don't want to work, create the illusion of really a racialized illusion that black people don't want to work, which is ironic considering that they built this country without wages during the era of slavery. So we call on our senator not only to make sure that the child tax credit comes back to life, but make sure it goes to those who need it the most. Thank you so much, Rick and Bo. Next up, I would like to welcome Jim Probst. He is, he works with the Citizens Climate Lobby and is a member of the Boone County Black Lung Association. Jim will speak on the need for a just transition for West Virginian workers, represented through 48C in the Build Back Better Act and the extension of the Black Lung Program. Let's welcome Jim. Hello. Uh, at some point, I'm going to get you all to help me with this, uh, and it'll be pretty simple. Uh, all I'm going to want you to do is say, why Joe? We'll get to that in a minute. So Joe keeps saying that he can't come back to West Virginia and support a piece of legislation that he can't explain. Well, I would like for him to explain why he is walking away from billions of dollars of investment that would mean so much for West Virginia and the people of West Virginia. I, I've been trying to imagine, I was thinking about this on the drive in, I was trying to imagine his predecessor, uh, Robert Byrd, coming home at Christmas and saying, I'm sorry, but I can't support billions of dollars of investment in West Virginia. You know, it just never would have happened. <clears throat> so my question is, why, Joe? So he's passing up investment targeted specifically towards coal communities that have suffered so much with the downturn in the coal industry. Why, Joe? <laughs> we can do this. Investments in clean, he's passing up investments in clean energy manufacturing in West Virginia. Why, Joe? Investments in carbon capture and sequestration in West Virginia. Why, Joe? Investments in clean hydrogen production. Why, Joe? Investments in energy storage. Why, Joe? Investments in grid modernization to ensure grid reliability. Why, Joe? And, and at that point, I just want to go, I got a letter from Joe today says one of his concerns is that it will re risk the reliability of our electric grid well <laughs> included in build back better is investment in you know increasing our grid reliability so it just it doesn't make any sense 
And so then the other thing that's included in Build Back Better that's critically important to West Virginia is that the Black Lung Disability Trust Fund is slated to expire at the end of this year. And the, that means that the amount that the coal companies are uh, going to be obligated to uh, invest in the fund is going to be reduced by over 50%. Uh, the, the fund is already in um, financial problems, so we're going to have to pick up the bill. We've got coal miners that we've got an epidemic, you know, we're, we're all facing the virus, but our coal miners for a number of years have been facing uh, an epidemic uh, of black lung. They're getting it at an earlier age. They were 27 years old. They were autopsied at Big Branch that already had black lung disease. 27 years old. One in five miners at this point in time are being di diagnosed with black lung disease. Black lung disease is a terminal disease. You don't recover from black lung disease. And it's a debilitating disease. And so the extension of that fund uh, it, it's just it's critical for West Virginia and for our miners, and, and I just really don't understand how Joe can walk away from that. And the last thing I call on Joe Manson to explain is I would like to him, for him to explain to my grandchildren why he's leaving behind a world that is going to be less livable, harder to live in than the one that he inherited. And I have a hard time doing that, and I would like to hear him explain that. So, why, Joe? Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim, for speaking to these extremely important provisions in Build Back Better. We know that West Virginians widely support this piece of legislation and so do a broad coalition of West Virginian organizations that have supported this quick response in putting together our rally and vigil yesterday, our rally today. These groups are represented in person here today and virtually on our live stream. And they advocate for a wide range of West Virginian issues from civic rights, democracy and social justice to water and the environment. I want to take a moment and read the names of these hardworking organizations in our state that have rallied together this week in support of Build Back Better. And it's a long list, so I apologize, but if you'll give me a minute to read it off. The West Virginia Climate Alliance, the Citizens Climate Lobby, the NAACP Charleston, West Virginia branch, Reimagine Appalachia, the Chesapeake Climate Action Network, the American Friends Service Committee, the Poor People's Campaign of West Virginia, Race Matters West Virginia, West Virginia Citizen Action Group, the West Virginia Environmental Council, West Virginia for Affordable Health Care, Rise Up West Virginia, the National Association of Social Workers West Virginia Chapter, the West Virginia Sierra Club, Common Defense, the New Jobs Coalition, Black by God, the West Virginian, West Virginia, NAACP, Call to Action for Racial Equality, Kanawha Valley Now, Our Future West Virginia, the chapters, the Greenbrier in Summers County chapters of Indivisible, the Women's March of Summers County, and the NAACP Greenbrier chapter. That's more than two dozen organizations that support just in the past couple days Build Back Better and have come together to raise West Virginian voices on these important policies. So at this point, I want to open the mic to you all for you all to come forward and share your stories of how any policy in Build Back Better will benefit you, will benefit your family, will benefit your state. So if anyone is interested, you can come forward now and share your story. Thank you all. My name is Erica McClung, and I'm hoping that Joe Manchin is indeed watching this. 
and I've heard him say that people are wanting to beat him up right now. And I want him to know that I don't want to beat him up, but I do want to talk to him, and I want him to hear me. I, too, am a West Virginian. We are all here West Virginians, and we know how to live under hard times, and we know how to live under miserable quality of life standards and still find a happiness for ourselves. That doesn't mean that we should have to. And that doesn't mean that we can take more of it. We are indeed a collective of people in this great nation, under one big sky, on this one green earth. A nation that was once rich and powerful now has nothing more for her people says a man who made millions off of coal, all the while knowing that it was bringing on the destruction of West Virginia, while also championing on the tipping point of the entire environmental scale of the world. A man who drives a Maserati and owns a yacht tells us that investing our money in us is a bad investment, a bad idea. And I must respectfully disagree. I think that history showed us a hundred years ago what a monumental program that the Build Back Better Act, everything that it entails, yeah, it, it, it's pricey, but it's a good investment. Just like the New Deal, it, it brought about faith in our economic system, it brought hope to the American people. Hope that we need right now. I, I mean, Joe says it's getting bad, and yes it is, and it's only getting worse. And we have nothing else to strap, okay? We've done tightened up everything there is left to tighten. And we live here, we work here, we all give to our community in one form or another. And even if this money, you know, it, it's collective money indeed, but she uses it to pay the local landlord. He uses it to buy food at the local grocery store. My grandbaby's got electric because of it right now. We need that. And, and Joe, I, I certainly hope that you get back to the table and fix this for us. We're in a bad way. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your words with us today and sharing how Build Back Better would benefit you and your community. Next up, uh, our next speaker during this open night period is Gary Zuckett. Well, it's good to see folks out here today. Like she said, my name is Gary Zuckett. I'm executive director of West Virginia Citizen Action. And we've been a part of the uh, Climate Alliance and a part of the West Virginia New Jobs Coalition and working all year this year to promote green jobs, to promote care jobs, and to send the message to Senator Manchin and to the rest of our representatives here in West Virginia that just passing the bricks and mortar infrastructure bill is not enough. We need more. We need to fix the social infrastructure in our nation, which is also crumbling. We need care jobs, we need green jobs, and we need the kind of jobs that pay a living wage. And that's what the Build Back Better Act is designed to move us towards. It's not an end-all and be-all. It won't fix everything, but it will fix a lot of things. And we are all here uh, today because we want to send that message to Senator Manchin to go back to the negotiating table to work with his caucus and bring together a bill that can pass and something that we can look back on and say, yes, this was a this was a good bill. This was a a uh, a, a bill that 
could help move West Virginia and the country forward. So with that, I, get, I will turn the mic back over to our MC. And again, but before, let's do a little chant. When I say build back, you say better. Build back. Better. Build back. Better. Build back. Better. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you all for coming today. Thank you for sharing your stories of how Build Back Better will benefit you, will benefit your community, will benefit our state. West Virginians know that Build Back Better is good for our communities, good for our environment, good for our economy. And we hope that Senator Joe Manchin has heard us today. We hope that Senator Joe Manchin heard us yesterday when more than 50 people came out and stood together and rallied and had a candlelight vigil sharing the same stories, similar stories we heard today, we heard yesterday. While they came from different people, we all heard stories on how important Build Back Better is for our families for and for our communities. Before we wrap up as the sun is setting and we want to make sure that we're not on the side of the road as it gets dark, I want to do a um, little chant with you all. So what we're going to do is I'm going to shout out something that we want that's in Build Back Better. So say, we want the child tax credit. And you all will reply, come on, Joe, make it so. Does that sound good? Yeah. So let's try that. Let's start it out. <laughs> we want a child tax credit. Come on, Joe, make it so. We want clean energy jobs. Come on, Joe, make it so. We want paid family leave. Come on, Joe, make it so. We want veteran health care. Come on, Joe, make it so. We want black lung benefits. Come on, Joe, make it so. We want fair prescription drug pricing. Come on, Joe, make it so. We want better water infrastructure. Come on, Joe, make it so. We want universal pre-K. Come on, Joe, make it so. We want coal community funding. Come on, Joe, 